All right, we're back. It's been quite a while. I apologize again. I keep saying this every episode. Uh, it's not a lack of motivation. It's a lack of time. I got a lot of things going on. But good news, I brought another team member on. She's going to be helping edit the podcast moving forward. So I believe we're going to be hitting a weekly episode release, which is what Cub and I have been wanting this whole time. And uh, yeah, so I can't 100% promise that, but I think that's the piece of the puzzle that was needed as of right now. So speaking of motivation, that's what I wanted to talk about today. A lot of us struggle with this. I I know me personally, I've been running uh, my own business for 19 years now, and I've had huge blocks of time where I, I had things that I wanted to build, things that I wanted to try to do, to learn, all these kind of things. And I found myself, you know, sitting there and just not not taking action. And I, I always thought it was like lack of motivation. And maybe that's bullshit. But I've been picking up little bits of information here and there. And it wasn't until I got them all put together that I feel like I finally really got a handle on this and sort of have a formula that's really working for me. So I'm going to run through, I wrote a bunch of bullet points down and I want to run through all of these for you. And hopefully you can find some some information here that'll help you stay motivated and, and mainly just get moving and get heading in that direction of whatever it is you want to get to. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to tie it directly back to graph or not, but these are all really general things that you can apply to anything. So if you did want to apply this to your graph career or trying to make it as an artist or trying to build a business or any of that kind of stuff, all of this stuff I'm going to talk about today is stuff that I've found that was very valuable and it be helping me move forward in the uh, the direction I wanted to go. So number one for me is momentum. So I am really good at staying moving when I'm moving. And I think that's a pretty common trait for a lot of people. But for me, it was recognizing that once I get that momentum and once I pick up some speed and start start connecting the dots and things start working, it's very easy to stay on track. So, I mean, I've been on this, I've probably been on this one year stretch where it's the, the opposite. It's hard to, to stop pushing forward. Uh, whereas when I'm on those kind of lack of motivation things, it's very difficult to get moving. So I know, and I recognize that as long as I can pick up some momentum that I'll be able to keep, keep it going. And and there's a lot of cliches that you can hear, like, uh, a body in motion stays in motion and shit like that. So it's a, it's a, it's an actual thing. And so even though I've known that it's still very hard to start. And that's like the biggest thing. It's like taking that first step tends to be really, at least for me, and I'm sure it is for a lot of people is very difficult. And what I've recognized is that my problem at least was that I was looking at the whole thing. So when you start to look at, like, say, if you're a fucking mountain climber or something, and you're looking all the way at the top, and you're trying to figure out how you're going to get all the way up to the top, you know, you're going to get overwhelmed with that idea of, you know, I have no idea how many steps and different things you got to navigate to get all the way there. But the reality is, you just have to start, you have to put your hand here and, and get moving and start heading in that direction. And then you start picking up momentum. You start feeling like you're winning every little every little step you take in the right, in the right direction. It starts building up your confidence. So this can be applied for me. I can give some examples on how that's worked for me in business. You know, when when I when I opened the studio in 2015, and uh, part of that had a, a nonprofit component, where we we ended up having the community art studio, which was a space for people to come in and, and black book every day and, and gather and, and have little black book sessions and all that kind of stuff when we'd host art shows. So it was like a community art space, which was the beginning. And then we ended up building out the mobile graffiti art uh, program, which was, or is, it's the, it's a 40 foot wide, eight foot tall wall. That's, it's uh professionally fabricated, made out of steel and and wood. So we can load this huge walls 40 feet wide, but you can paint both sides. So it's really 80 feet of wall space, 80 feet by eight feet tall. And it's, it's, um, 
it was designed really well so it can all fit into a cargo van. Uh, and then the other pro- part of the program is the cuts crew, the clean up the streets, the community service focused uh, graffiti crew. And so if I had sat down and tried to look at all of those things we were going to try to do all at once, I would have gotten incredibly overwhelmed. But the way that I did it was I just opened up a Google Doc and just started bullet pointing shit out and then coming back to each bullet point later. Like once you list out a whole bunch of stuff, you could come back to it later and then add other bullet points under there and and just keep, you keep building on it. And as you build on it, more and more ideas come and more momentum. You start picking up speed. Next thing you know, it's even hard to stop because you're, you're so in the zone, in the groove, whatever it is you want to say. So it's, for me, it was recognizing and this this applies to any project that I'm trying to do. When I'm not able to get started, I try to find the smallest step I can take. What's the very minimum I can do to get myself moving in the right direction? You can apply that to fitness. And I've talked about this in a, another episode where I talked about the Tiny Habits book. And that played a big role in me kind of recognizing that You don't have to try to tackle the whole thing all at once. You just need to take a step in the right direction. You need to take that step and start forming a habit of taking these little steps. Those little steps start to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Next thing you know, you got that momentum, you're moving forward, and it's a lot easier to stay on track once you build that up. And so as the things are building up, uh, I don't know too much about the flow state, but my understanding is like, as you start getting into the groove, you sort of get into this tunnel vision where you're just in there. Like, I I don't know, maybe I'm not going to be able to explain it very well, but I think everybody's experienced this thing where you pick up that momentum and you start, you just start getting hyper-focused to where everything else just sort of shuts down and you're kind of like just in that zone, really kind of focused on what it is you're doing. And, And it's sort of like, we, we talk about it in another episode that's going to be coming out later with the, uh, the host of the Toy Division podcast, which you guys should check out. It's, it's, a, it's, a, cool, it's a cool graph podcast from, uh, I believe it comes out of Australia. And so, like, as you're, as you're getting those little wins, the brain, let me see if I can explain this right. It's like, I learned recently that your brain is wired so from back, you know, when we were out foraging and doing all that shit to survive, your brain is sort of wired to where as you start to make progress, it releases dopamine and that dopamine makes you feel good. And it's like, it's a kind of a reward system for you. It's like rewarding you for heading in the right direction. So it's like the brain's way of keeping you on that path. And that's how, that's why some people say, that the happiness is in the journey and it's not in the destination because your brain is literally rewarding you for every, every uh, small win that you make on the way to the destination. So I believe that's how you get into that, that sort of state where you get into that groove where you're building up that momentum because you're getting these little wins. Your brain is releasing little bits of dopamine and it's like making you feel good. And then your brain naturally wants to replicate whatever it is that was creating those dopamine releases. It's a fucking way out shit, man. You should like (laughs) take a look at it. But um, anyway, so uh, I'm going to move on to something else. So another piece of this that I learned was how important it is to take care of yourself. Like the idea of the mind and body connection, it really was very lost on me for most of my life. I always thought like exercise and eating right was all about your physical body, you know, and it's kind of stupid. Your brain is part of your physical body. I mean, it's, it's in there. It's not like some separate shit, but I've always thought of it as a separate thing. So the more I'm learning, the more I'm starting to understand how taking care of your body and eating right and exercising and all that stuff, it's, it's, there's a tremendous effect on, on your brain function. So there's a lot of foods that you can eat. And um, there's a guy named uh, Jim Quick. You could check him out. He's a, 
he's a expert on on how to learn you know uh he has a book called i think it's called limitless a really good book uh, it's teaching you how to learn it's all these kind of different tools and he talks about different foods that are good for your brain and all this kind of stuff so he also mentioned like your brain takes up a really small percent of a small percentage of your body mass but i think they said it's like 20 percent of the energy that you you use so like through food and all that stuff is going to your brain so you have to think like if you're eating really healthy food you're feeding your brain really healthy food obviously really healthy energy clean clean energy if you're eating shitty food it's the opposite uh exercise also has a direct effect on your brain function uh, affects your your mood quite a bit i know i've talked about this on past episodes where you know some some years back i was maybe like 65 pounds overweight uh was on uh two different antidepressants i was eating like shit i was drinking not a ton but more than i should dabbling in drugs and doing all this kind of stuff and it wasn't until i really got got a handle on this and got myself in good shape and started eating really clean food that I was able to get myself off of those. Well, I guess I could rephrase. I mean, I never tried to get off off of the the meds. I was just sort of like sucked into that whole thing. And uh, but you know, even in retrospect, I feel like I, I don't know that I would have been able to do it, and I, I'm not sure what would have happened. But I got myself in really good shape. Was eating really healthy, and I was you know had really good habits. And uh, I found it very easy to get off of that stuff. So I, I feel like there's probably some people that that shouldn't do that. And obviously, you need to get advice. But I just felt like I was only on that to level out all the damage that I was doing by eating shitty, carrying around too much body fat, not exercising, all that kind of stuff. So I, I feel like that's the only reason I was on that stuff. But if you think about how much of an effect being in good shape. So even if you are the kind of person that maybe needs that to level you off because of some chemical shit, you're going to be way further ahead if you take good care of yourself, if you eat healthy, if you exercise, and you don't even have to like exercise a shitload. I mean, it's good for you if you do, but but if you're not, it could go back to that, taking that first step. Like you don't, if when I was like 65 pounds overweight, if I was like, okay, I'm going to jump in and I'm going to start eating healthy every single day. I'm going to exercise for two hours a day. That shit would have lasted like one day probably because I would have been all sore and all fucked up after the first two hour exercise. The next day I would be too sore to work out. I'd probably eat like shit, you know, and I'd be sore for like a week. So I probably wouldn't get even get back on track again. But if you take those small steps, form those small habits, just take a walk around the block or something like that. Just a step in the right direction, start gaining momentum. You start feeling better, start getting results, all that kind of stuff. So as I was writing these bullet points out, I, I started thinking uh, this this sort of um, comparison came to mind. And I was thinking like, if if you were a race, I don't know anything about race cars or anything like that. But for some reason, this is what came to mind. But let's say you were like the best race car driver in the world. Like nobody's better than you. You're like top of the top by a lot. Right. And you get put into this race and uh, everybody has state of the art shit and whatever it is that fucking makes a race car good. And they have like a top, top notch crew and all that kind of stuff to help keep the thing moving and whatever it is they do. And even though you're the best, you get put in this race with like a 1973 Pinto that's been sitting in a garage for like 35 years. And probably some of you youngsters don't even know what a Pinto is, but Google it. What do you think the chances are, even even with all those skills, that that guy is going to win the race? There's probably very little, maybe zero chance. I don't know. I can't. Yeah, it has to be. Unless everybody's a total fuck up and they all crash their cars right in the beginning. That dude's not going to win. So consider your life in the same kind of way. Like you could have all read all the books and do all this kind of shit. But if you don't take care of the machine that's that's driving you, that's putting you into motion, 
how, how far are you going to get? I mean, that's just, I don't know. That's the way I look at it. So another thing that was key for me was to establish what my purpose was. Like I work very hard. I'm trying to build my, my company and I'm trying to invest money and kind of stack wealth and do all that kind of stuff. But I don't really care about shit like cars and fancy clothes. I don't care about the stuff that, that you might think somebody that's driven by money would do it for. Like I have money in the bank. I can afford certain things, but I don't buy all those things because it's not really my purpose. My purpose, if I'm being honest, is I do want to build a, a lot of wealth and I do want to build uh, successful companies and, and successful investments and do all that kind of stuff. But I want to give a bunch of that money, most of it probably, to to rescuing animals. I've found that that's something that I've been building more and more and more passionate about. Uh, and I'm not going to get too far down what that is. If you want to talk to me about it, I'm happy to talk to you about it offline. But that's where I found my purpose is. And, and even though I, I guess you could also say my purpose is to give back to the graph culture um, you know, obviously if you follow machine studio or follow any of the things that I do, you'll see that a lot of the stuff that I do is to give back to the graph culture. But like what really, really, really motivates me and really keeps me going is, is the idea that someday I'll be able to rescue a lot of animals. And so anytime that I feel like I'm losing that momentum, which, which happens, I, I mean, I, I, like I said earlier, I've been on this one year stretch where I've been going hard, like almost no breaks. And, and it's even hard to take a break. But every now and then I start getting sucked into some of those things that distract me. And, and then I start getting, for me, when I'm not on the path that I feel like I'm supposed to be on, that act alone starts stressing me out. I start noticing, you know, I've uh, not got that much done today. Today wasn't very productive. Yesterday wasn't very productive. If I start slipping into that, I start stressing out. And the one thing, well, I can't say the one thing, but one of the things that's the strongest pull to get me back on track is that purpose. So whatever that purpose is for you, if you identify it, you can always look back to that and say, you know what, if I don't, if I don't keep pushing forward, I'm not going to be able to achieve this, whatever that is. And it totally works for me. It's, it's one of the things that really helps pull me back on track. Something interesting, maybe it's a, maybe it's like a side conversation, but right now we live in a, in a time where the most valuable commodity on the planet pretty much is your attention. So you have, very, very, very intelligent people that are very knowledgeable about how the brain works, how addiction works, how to hook you in, how to do all these things that are investing a tremendous amount of time and a tremendous amount of money into getting your attention. So think about how that affects your workflow. So you have things like social media that they've built in all of these algorithms and all this shit to feed you the shit that they know you like to see to keep you on that platform for hours, days, however long they can keep you on there so that you'll see the ads that generate the income. So if you think about it, you have all these people and that's not, that's just one thing. So they do the same shit on television with like, they end episodes on this cliffhanger that makes you want to watch the next one. They know that people are doing things like binge watching on Netflix and uh, whatever other Amazon Prime or whatever the fuck they're binge. You're binge watching these uh, TV shows or series or whatever, and they know that and they know how to how to make it so that when the episode ends you know there's another episode and you want to know what the fuck happened. So you have all these very smart people that are trying to get your attention. The same thing with games, all those um, crazy phone games that have been out that 
that are super addicting that they keep you, they keep rewarding you. And even back to what I was talking about with the dopamine releases, like these people know how to trigger that stuff. So you get these dopamine releases with like sounds and all these triggers and all this kind of stuff. So it keeps you on that game. And so it's the same thing with scrolling. Uh, same thing with like spending hours upon hours and hours watching TV. So th- these tools can, at least for me, they've been very helpful at overcoming a lot of that stuff that's all around us all the time. That's trying to get your attention, trying to keep you watching or playing or doing whatever it is that they want you to be doing. Okay, so next thing I want to talk about is sleep. And this is something that a lot of people underestimate. I myself also underestimated it for a long time, and I still don't really sleep quite as much as I would like. But there is obviously everybody knows that there's benefits to sleep, but a lot of people tend to think like, ah, you know, I can, I can function on four hours or whatever it is. But technically, you're doing yourself a disservice by doing that. And uh, some things that I've learned uh, somewhat recently, there's some crazy stat that I don't don't know if I have it completely right, but it's like the subconscious mind is responsible for like 97% of the shit that we do. So if you think about all the stuff that we do on a daily basis, you kind of think that your conscious mind is what's doing all that stuff. You're making all these decisions. But when you really think about it, there's so many things that you do that you don't think about. Like, do you think about digesting your food? Do you think about breathing air in and out of your lungs? Do you think about all these different functions that happen? It's it's crazy when you start going down the path of like how much shit is being done on sort of autopilot. And so my understanding is that your subconscious mind is like so much more powerful than your conscious mind. There's even shit that I read in this book called the psycho psycho cybernetics. It's a pretty fascinating book, but they, they said there's a, I can't remember the name of it. There's some shit uh, like a gland or something in your brain that they believe records every single thing that you experience And it can be recalled. So like, um, I guess when they do brain surgery, sometimes the, there's no, uh, pain. What is it? Pain nerve endings, or I don't, I don't know what the term is, but so they can operate on your brain and and it doesn't, you don't feel pain. I I hope I hope I understand that. Right. So the way I understood it is they do certain brain surgeries while the patient is awake so that they can ask them questions on how shit's, I don't even know. (laughs) My understanding is they're operating on a pay. It's fucking crazy sounding, but so anyway, move on. Uh, So there was a story in that book where a guy was operating on somebody's brain. And when he, I don't know if he poked it or touched it with a tool or some shit like that, the, the patient was like transported back to this memory and she completely experienced that memory again as if she was there. They were able to replicate that. And so uh, I believe they, they started to believe that this, I can't remember what it is. So since they were able to replicate this same uh, phenomenon or whatever you want to call it, they were able to replicate it. They believe that that thing is pretty much recording everything. So, With that in mind, and you think about your subconscious mind is doing all this crazy stuff. When you're sleeping, your conscious mind turns off, but your subconscious mind doesn't. It's still going. So there's all these other functions going on. And that Jim Quick guy had mentioned that uh, while you're sleeping, your, your brain is like flushing out toxins and clearing out like plaque or something crazy. So it's like functioning in this way to where your body's doing all kinds of important stuff while you're sleeping. So if you're shorting yourself on sleep, you're sort of shorting yourself on all those functions. Then obviously there's like the whole factor of you're just not going to perform as well if you're not rested. So you might think like, if I only sleep for four hours, then I get an extra four hours if I, you know, and compared to if I slept eight hours, but 
I don't really believe you get that extra four hours because you're not, you're not going to get as much done if you're not rested. So you're going to be performing at a higher level while you're rested and while you're allowing your subconscious to, to do all of these important functions over the course of eight hours or so, as opposed to only giving it like a few hours to do all of the shit that it needs to do. There's a reason why we have to sleep. Like there's certain shit that has to happen in order to keep us moving. So another interesting thing happened to me in college. It was, you know, 1999 or 2000 or something like that. I was, uh, I was trying to solve this like pretty complex, at least complex for me at the time, this 3D animation thing on a project that I was trying to do. And I couldn't figure out how to make this one thing. I I don't even remember what it was, but one night I went to sleep and I was dreaming about the thing that I was trying to do. And so I was basically working on that shit while I was sleeping. And I found the problem. I found the solution to the problem. And when I got up the next day, I was like, oh shit, that's, that's exactly what I needed. And I went and I tried the solution that I dreamed about and it actually worked. And you can even read about this. Like you can Google, uh, I think try Googling like famous problems that have been solved during sleep and you'll find all kinds of shit. I believe like Edison and Tesla And I think there's like a Beatles song that was written while I think Paul McCartney was sleeping. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, different things you can, you can read about that sort of tell you that, you know, you're sleeping, you're dreaming all kinds of way out shit, but like your subconscious mind is so powerful. It's doing all kinds of crazy stuff that is critical to, you know, keeping you moving and it's critical to all kinds of shit. So so I would highly suggest uh, taking your sleep schedule seriously. I am definitely trying to take it a lot more seriously. So another thing that I've found to be incredibly helpful is to have a morning routine. So and I've heard a lot of different people talk about it. And it's like, it's a way to start your day off right. And it's a way to kind of like, get yourself a few wins right off the bat. So if you have a morning routine of like maybe four tasks that you have to do every single morning, if you, if you get your morning routine done, you, you automatically feel a little bit better. Like you've already achieved four things at the very beginning of your day. So you're already starting off on a good, a good note, you know? So for me, uh, I, my morning routine changes all the time. And, and I talk about it in, um, in other episodes and it's probably slightly different every time I talk about it. And this one, is going to be different still because I've come up with some new shit that I learned. So the the morning routine that I've been doing lately that I really find very effective is number one, I, I don't actually have to get up before the sun. And uh, I recently learned something kind of interesting that I'm trying out. A lot of people don't have the choice. You You have to get up at five in the morning or whatever to get to your job or whatever it is. But um, I actually, I don't have to, and I used to get up really early. I'd get up around five o'clock in the morning. So lately I've been trying to get up at seven or I just get up when the sun comes out. And so something I learned recently that if you, when you wake up, if you go right outside and look into the bright sky, there's some kind of, uh, your body releases certain chemicals that start to wake you up. And they're also, I think there are chemicals that improve your mood and all that stuff. And I heard this on a podcast. I can't remember which one it was. It might've been the, the mindset mentor, but I was like, yeah, I'm going to give that a try. So I woke up with the sun. I went right outside and I'm just groggy and really tired. And as I'm looking up at the sky and uh, the sun's coming up, so I'm looking off towards where the sun's coming up. And you can just literally feel your body waking up while you're looking at this bright sun. I mean, not looking at the sun. I mean, that's, that's bad for you, but look at a bright spot that's comfortable. And it's, it's very interesting. You can actually feel, feel yourself waking up. So when I get up, I go straight outside. I look at the sun and I stand there for a couple minutes, just staring up, 
I'm sorry. I don't look at the sun. I look up at the sky somewhere that's not going to burn the shit out of my eyes. And I stand there until I feel good. I feel like my day is starting. My body's waking up. Everything's starting to, to fire and all this kind of shit. It's supposed to be something built in us to where your, your body releases certain chemicals when it's dark or certain times of night. In fact, check out the Toy Division uh, podcast. He does an episode on sleep, and I think I might have learned some of this stuff from, from his conversation as well. And so once I'm done with that, I come back in the house, I pet all my dogs, and I, I remind myself how grateful I am that they're all here. I have this really old, super old dog. I don't even know how old he is, but he's got to be like 20 or something, and he's still in real good shape. You know, it's very surprising. So I just make sure I remind myself to be grateful for them and all that stuff. So that's starting your day off on this, like on a high note. Then once I'm done with that, go right into hydration because you wake up dehydrated. So I just chug a bunch of water. I just get, get a bunch of water in there. And I start, start feeling like my body is just really coming together. My mind is coming together. Also, meditation is a big one for me. I tend to try to get 20 minutes in. I have a couple of different techniques that I like to do. The first one, I've, I've gotten into some of the best like meditative states using this technique, and it's something I learned, uh, I don't know, like over 10 years ago from some MP3s that I downloaded. The, the way you do it is you imagine you're breathing in this pure healing light. And so what I do is just As I'm breathing in, I imagine there's just these like this light coming in and it's going in through my body and uh, sort of clearing out any negativity or any sickness or anything like that. And then when you're breathing out, you imagine you're breathing out all this like dark black smoke. And that's meant to, I don't know, like symbolize or get your mind thinking that you're you're breathing in all this healing light and then you're breathing out the negativity and the, uh, any sickness or disease or anything that might be in your body or in your spirit or whatever you want to think of it as. And the thing I like about that technique is that it, it, it gives you a little bit more to focus on because one of the things that you can do with meditation is focus on your breath. And sometimes I find that a little difficult to just focus on the breath. You can focus on like the sensations of the of the air coming in and out of your nose and, and things like that. But with the breathing in the light and breathing out the the smoke, it kind of gives me another thing to focus on that helps me get into that meditative state. And then lately I've been using an app called waking up. It's a, it's a guided meditation and you can set it for 10 or 20 minutes. And I've been finding that really helpful because he has a lot of different techniques that you can learn and, and incorporate And then the next thing I like to do is incorporate some kind of learning. So whether that's, I read every day, I read, um, I read at least 10 pages a day of, of a personal development book. And that's, um, that's a non-negotiable, but it, it's not always part of my morning routine. Sometimes I've been reading before bed and uh, I've been enjoying that. So, but I still try to get in that learning. So whether I, whether I do decide to do my reading or I listen to an audio book while I'm getting my coffee and all that stuff, or uh, lately I've also been jumping on Clubhouse and I'll get on, on a room that is of a subject that I want to learn about. And so I make sure I get that learning in. And then after that, I get my exercise out of the way, 45 minutes. And so I don't always get it all done, but I know with 100% certainty And when I get all of those things done and I start my day off with with that whole morning routine out of the way, my days are so much better. They're so much more productive. I'm in such a better mood. I feel better. It's I believe in the morning routine. So the very last thing I want to touch on briefly is burnout. And I, I have had this thing where I felt like I was burned out and I was like, I just can't get going because I'm burned out, you know? And the, the further along I get in the way that my, I'm thinking about things, I kind of don't think it's burnout for me personally. I think it's that whole lack of motivation. And like I was saying with momentum, the further away I get 
from being on track, the easier it is to stay off track. So one of my vices is video games. Like I can fucking, I could waste a lot of time on, on video games. So I tend to not really fuck with them too much unless I have a lot of extra time, which like I don't have nowadays right now. So there's, it's pretty much not even an option. There's no point in even, even playing them at all. But I do enjoy it. I mean, it still even sounds fun to me to, to blow through a bunch of hours just sitting there like a zombie playing video games, you know, but uh, I know what's going to happen is the further away I get from being in that state of momentum that I know keeps me on track, the further away I get, the harder it is to get back on it. Now, granted, with all the tools that I've just talked about, especially taking that first small step, and just to go back to that briefly, and I don't know if I touched on it, is finding that the easiest first thing you can do. Like Jim Quick said it um, in a clubhouse room, and I think he even said it in his book. If you tr- or, or it might have even been in the Tiny Habits. It doesn't matter where it came from, but the someone said, <laughs> one of these guys, they said, uh, if you're trying to form the habit of reading and you, you're a shitty reader, instead of saying, I'm going to read for an hour a day, just say, I'm going to read one fucking sentence <laughs> and that's it. At least you're starting, you know, it's like, that's the, that's the first thing you got to do. Read one sentence just, or even, even, they even said like, even less than that, just set the goal of opening the book. You know what I mean? So it's like, find that small first step to get yourself just moving in the right direction. So for me, I found like burnout, what, what my perception of what, and I'm not saying this for everybody. I'm saying this for me personally what I perceived as being burned out was more me gaining, I guess it's sort of like opposite momentum. The longer I'm not doing the things that I feel like I want to be doing, the more momentum I get in that direction. So if I'm getting in that direction of sitting around watching TV and playing video games all day, it's the same exact effect. So the more I stay on that path, the, you know, the harder I go on that path. So I'll end up burning through a shitload of time. And so if you just flip it to the other side and I start heading in the other direction, I start building up momentum going that way. It becomes very, very easy to stay on that path. So as far as for me personally, all of these tools that I just went over are what I use to, to maintain that momentum. And, uh, I think that's all I got for you. So, uh, really appreciate all of you guys. And, uh, like I said, The goal is to be very consistent. And I keep saying that, but I have a feeling that uh, we're there. So um, I will be seeing you very soon. And uh, thanks again. All right. Appreciate each and every one of you guys who are supporting the cause and and continue to spread the love. And uh, yeah. Stay up.